Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Allison West. Today I'll have guests on from the Troop County Anchor Foundation. Also, I'll have a guest on from the LaGrange Fire Department. So make sure that you stay tuned for those interviews coming up in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have ladies on from the Troop County Anchor Foundation. I have on founder Amia Cotton and also board member Destiny Thomas. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with all this beauty here on this beautiful day here <laughs> to talk about something that I, Amia, I know that is very near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and Destiny, I know is near and dear to your heart because you are a member of the movement that's taking place. Yes. But Amia, tell us, tell us just a little bit about yourself first of all, and then we'll kind of jump over to Destiny and get her to tell us a little bit about herself, if you don't mind. Okay, well, like you said, my name is Amia Cotton. Um, I'm a native here in LaGrange, Georgia, and um, I am a probation officer for the city of Hoganville. Oh, okay. All right. Very, pretty intense job, I'm sure. Yeah, it can be. It can be. <laughs> it can I can understand. Be. <laughs> I think anytime you're dealing with the public and dealing with people in that arena, right, right. it can be pretty tough sometimes. Yeah. Destiny, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. I'm Destiny Thomas. I'm also a native of LaGrange. And I currently teach life science, seventh grade at Greenville Middle School. All right, very good. So you're both in the public arena, dealing yes. with the public on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. Uh, Mia, and, and you're here, you're the founder of Anchor Foundation. Talk about Anchor Foundation, because I, I remember last year you came to the Mayor and Council and you made a presentation there, mm -hmm. and I think you have some community support. Talk a little bit about Anchor Foundation. Well, Anchor Foundation is a vision that just came along and um, I met with my friends. Our members are Destiny Thomas, Kanisha Sewell, April Gaddis, Adrian Harris, and Desmond King. And I met with those, um, met with them, and we got together and we all had the same plan, the same goal, as we wanted to reach our young kids and young adults in the community. And at that time, it was a numerous of violence, different violence activities. Uh, taken along mm -hmm. and we was like no we want to put a stop to this and bring a bring everyone together and try to work together and whatever if you had a negative situation we wanted you to see how to turn it into a positive so I met with um, Chief Dickmore, Mayor Jim Thornton also Sheriff Woodruff and I kind of told them my plan and what I had and also my members and we came together we worked together and, and they are very supportive of the foundation and we came together and we jump started and they've been there ever since and we just been working together to try to build a foundation, try to build our community and any way we could we can to help anybody. Okay. And so that's our goal, like they say, reach one, teach one. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Well, very good. I mean, inspiring story there. And Destiny, you're a board member. Talk about yes. talk about what does it mean to you to be a, a part of this community and have seen some of the things that me were talking about, some of the violent things that are taking place in our community. What does that mean to you to be able to try to help to control that or curtail some of that? Talk about it. Um, to me as an individual, it means that it gives me an opportunity to be a role model to somebody, to um, show them how to do things in a more positive manner instead of looking at things from a more negative aspect. Um, it gives me the opportunity to get more involved with my community. I have a three-year-old daughter and um, the things that are taking place, this is not the environment that I want her to grow up in. So this gives me an opportunity to kind of be an advocate for her, so to speak, as well as for the community and kind of give back. And when we do implement things that are more on an educational aspect, me being a teacher, you know, I can kind of say, well, hey, this is how we do things in the education system and kind of bring forth um, those things as far as whatever it is, whatever types of events we put together. Okay, very good. You know, you're talking about the environment that you want your children to grow up in. And definitely none of us want our kids to be in an environment where there's, you know, constant violence or right. negativism. Right, right. And I, I hear both you ladies using the word positive, mm -hmm. positive. And I think that's what we all want for our kids, mm -hmm. to be surrounded by positive things, positive people, Absolutely. positive uh, activities. And, and speaking about that, I, I think that last year you all had a, a, an activity that took place over at the William Griggs Center called Taking Care Home. Mm -hmm. Talk yes. about that for us if you ladies don't mind. Well, we did that event at the <laughs> William Griggs Center uh -huh. um, last year and like Amelia, like Amelia said, it was kind of 
we were kind of in sort of like a rush yeah. trying to put it together. <laughs> yeah. So we were kind of hoping like, okay, this is going to do well. We don't know. We're new. You know, we just, we were trying to put ourselves out there, but it turned out to be such a success. Um, we worked hard, um, um, put forth a lot of time, spent a lot of time. And what we had was we had, um, Tyrone Poole to come by and speak to give some words of encouragement. Um, Elijah Kelly came by and he gave some words of encouragement. We had some people to come by and do entertainment. We had another um, gentleman, Mr. O'Shea Smith, mm -hmm. he came out, gave some very encouraging words. Um, it was just very good to see people in the community to come out, support us, the um, karate, I can't remember, his, what's his name? It's Taekwondo. I think okay. yeah, I remember Taekwondo, they came out. We had kind of like a career, um, some career booths set up. We had the police department. We had our alma mater, Miles College. Um, <laughs> and we had <laughs> um, Zumba, just some other people to come out and kind of give information about their business or about their school. Um, we gave food, people donated food. We just kind of went door to door talking to people, trying to see who could help us out. Okay. And it turned out to be a great success. Oh, very yeah. good. And I think, you know, one of the things that, that is so important, you, heard, you said you got the community involved mm -hmm. and, and you were able to have giveaways and, and this oh, was yeah. free to the kids? Yes, was everything, everything was, was free. free. Book bag giveaways, uh, gift cards. We had local restaurants donate um, to also not only promoting their business but giving back as well mm -hmm. and they help us to give back to the community and just a, our way of showing support and love to the community saying thank you for helping us put on this event as well because if it was for the community mm -hmm. we wouldn't have an event so absolutely. Right. absolutely and you know it's so much it's so important that i think you know and my audience perhaps have heard me say this in, in times past that i think whenever there's a need in this community we as people come together mm -hmm. to make sure that we meet that Absolutely. need. Now let me ask you, what are some of the goals that you all hope that the Anchor Foundation will be able to accomplish? Uh, Destiny, I heard you mention about the education, when there's an educational piece that's kind of implemented with, with Anchor Foundation. What are some of the goals that you all have for Anchor Foundation? Well, one thing that um, we've kind of brainstormed, it hasn't really been anything that's been set in stone yet, um, but there's, we want to do so much. Um, it's about four or five of us, so everybody's coming in with their different dreams and their different visions. Me as a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking, well, we can put together some or implement some some tutoring sessions or, you know, teaching children how to read or working with them with different subject areas. Maybe sometimes during the summer we can do some different projects, different camps, things that we can do, you know, on down the line. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's one thing. Right. And I would say the also different etiquette classes as well. Okay. Basically just mentoring to the kids, young adults as well, because sometimes we miss out on that as well. So that as well. And also um, the police force is also the sheriff department has been a great help is showing how we can let the community also see um, the police department and the sheriff department is working with our community as well as Absolutely. they do because a lot of them do not see that and they don't realize that they are there to help That's and right. they have been so supportive. So also with me being a probation officer and kind of seeing in a different way, um, I would like for us to also see how we can help also help the police department and sheriff department because it's not only just them that, you know, put out the laws, whatever, it's, it's on us as well. Absolutely. So also bringing us back together and joining forces with the police department and sheriff department as well. Very good, very good. And, and, and all that being said, you all have an event that's coming up uh, in August mm -hmm. that there's some deadlines that you want to get out to individuals. Talk about that, Mia, if you don't mind, and we'll talk about those deadlines too, okay? Well, Troop County Anchor Foundation is putting on a citywide field day. So uh -oh. we tell the Troop County, <laughs> get ready, get ready. Get ready. Um, it's going to be August the 2nd at Granger Park from 9 to 2. We are going to have different field day activities. I say we're bringing it back in an old school way, like <laughs> how we used to have field day, because now okay. I think it's kind of just fun day. Uh -huh. So we're going to have tug of war, sack races, balloon race, um, track and field, uh, 
house. Egg toss. Okay. I mean, we we're, we're bringing it back. Like I said, we're bringing it back old school. Now, wait a minute, you ladies, neither one of you like very old. I ain't <laughs> gonna bring it back old school. <laughs> we we, bring we it just back know old. about it. We just know yeah, about it. We just know about it. Know about it. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. There's some deadlines that you need the audience to know about too. I think there's a uh, registration. Talk a little bit about registration, ladies. Well, we're having a registration for um, on July the 19th at the William Greek Center from two to five. Um, there, where it's where you know the the teams because we want it to be ten ten teams for the basic for the regular field day events and it's ten dollars per person and it'll be a hundred dollars for your team. Um, there they can register for that. We also have a three on three basketball tournament that we are giving a cash prize to for the winner. Um, it's going to be three hundred dollars for the winner and a trophy. So the basketball tournament is a three on three basketball tournament and it's twenty dollars per person so that's sixty dollars for a team and we're doing a tennis tournament and that's twenty dollars per team okay. and we're doing a cash prize of two hundred dollars mm -hmm. and a trophy and the um, field day events we have a prize for them as well and we're doing a trophy for them and mm -hmm. then we're also doing we have a lot going on it yes. sounds um, like <laughs> <laughs> we are also doing a um, $500 scholarship for any upcoming um, college students, meaning they've graduated this past year or whatnot, um, and for students who are currently enrolled in college. What they need to do is have a minimum GPA of a 2.75 or higher. They need to write a 500 word essay, and they're writing the essay on why you feel like you deserve this scholarship. Okay. Um, and we'll announce all of these things at the um, field day and if they are interested they can email us at anchorfoundation at yahoo.com and all of this stuff will be due on the 19th, on the 19th. at the William okay. Greg Center. All right very good. Closing comment real quick Amia if there was somebody that hadn't been involved with Anchor Foundation who would like to be a sponsor how can they do that? Um, you can contact us again at anchorfoundation.com and also come over on July the 19th at the William Greaves Recreation Center from 2 to 5 if you are interested in any volunteers because we need a lot of volunteers. Okay. So any of that, we will be gladly to welcome you aboard. So come July 19th. Okay. And we're also good. asking for people that want to sponsor us, any businesses that are wanting to sponsor us. It's going to be $25 to sponsor us, and that will put your name on our Field Day t-shirt. So if there's anybody out there that wants to be a sponsor, please contact us. If you know us personally, um, call us up, see us you know, out in the community, or you can email us as well at anchorfoundation at yahoo.com. Okay. Well, ladies, I know that this will be an awesome day of events. Um, you know, the kids going to come out, I'm sure, and just yes. make sure that they, you know, they have a great time. The 303 basketball tournament, well, I wouldn't so age, I might try to try that. But <laughs> well, anyway. we're doing different age groups, well, so. I'm going to leave that to the younger <laughs> person. <laughs> right. Well, ladies, thank you all very much for being on the show today. And thank I know you. that the, the, the event will be a big success. Thank yes. you. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back from the week in just a moment. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm a flight nurse with AeriVac Life Team. I'm here to talk to you today about helmet safety. Whether riding a bicycle, motorcycle, or ATV, it's always a good idea to wear your helmet. Helmets not only prevent serious brain injury, they may just save your life. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, bicycle helmets are effective 85 to 88 percent of the time in preventing brain injury. For motorcycle riders, Helmets prevent death 29% of the time and are 67% effective in preventing significant brain injury. In Georgia and Alabama, all bicycle riders age 16 and under are required to wear a helmet. Motorcycle riders in both states are required to wear a helmet at all times. Make sure when purchasing a helmet for bicycles, it has the Sumer Product Safety Committee sticker on it or CPSC sticker. All motorcycle helmets should have a DOT approved or Department of Transportation approved helmet. Make sure that your helmet fits properly. It should fit snug but comfortable, should not slide from side to side or up and down. Ensure that it sits level on your head, low on your forehead, and never tilted back. Ensure that your helmet does not have any visible cracks or damage and that you don't wear a helmet that's been involved in an accident. Helmets involved in wreck can have unseen damage and may not adequately protect you. 
For more information on helmets, you can visit the National Highway Traffic Administra Safety Administration website at www.nhtsa.gov. As emergency medical providers in your community, we see a large increase in head injuries over the summer months, especially those related to bicycle, ATV, and motorcycle accidents. Please wear your helmet. It's not only the law, it's the smart thing to do and might just save your life. Have a fun and safe summer from your Troop County Arivac Life Team crew. Welcome back to the week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm being joined by Fire Marshal John Thomas with the LaGrange Fire Department. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, you know, John, it's a pleasure to sit down with you, and I think this is the first time that you and I have had an opportunity to sit down on the set to talk. It is. Uh, we've talked a number of times uh, down at City Hall and stuff. Tell us a little bit about John Thomas, first of all, if you don't mind. Uh, I come to work with the Fire Department uh, in 1996, okay. um, stayed on the trucks for about nine years, and then moved over to the Prevention Department. Oh, okay. All right. Now, and you, you are in the role of fire marshal, and you say you came on, you were kind of the firefighter. Talk about your role, the difference between being the fire marshal and being one that actually, you know, kind of goes out and fight fires, if you don't mind. Um, on a personal side, I can't speak for everybody, but okay. when I was a firefighter, that's all I wanted to do. Okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted to run calls, you know, fire, wrecks, medical, um, didn't really know nothing else I didn't know about the public and, uh -huh. and how to treat people and stuff like that because that was all of my concerns were and when I moved over to prevention it opened my eyes to the fire department uh -huh. and it, it really broadened my whole aspect of what we were there for that's right you know so many times you know we and we hope that people don't have to call you guys but then when they do call we know that you guys get out and put your lives on the line to go into a burning structure or whatever the case may be or to a medical call because a lot, a lot of the firemen now are also EMS uh, technicians correct right <clears throat> we have paramedics EMTs so yeah it's okay. gone a lot towards the medical side absolutely on it. absolutely now in your role as a fire marshal for the city you are talking about people you still protecting uh, right. and serving right talk about your role as a fire marshal well and that's what I realized when I come over to prevention mm -hmm. was I'm still helping people. That's right. Um, also I'm helping the firefighters because the main goal I have is life safety whether it's the business owner, the customers that are in that business or the firefighters that actually go in if they have a call at that business. Uh -huh. So I'm very proud of being it because now I'm taking care of the whole aspect of it. Absolutely, you know, you, when you talk about that, I think about my matriculation with the city of LaGrange and, you know, the various departments that I worked in and how everything now kind of comes together as a holistic one. Everything that you've gone through kind of like, oh man, like your eyes come open. Like, yeah, it man, all made sense. It makes sense then, right? It? Absolutely. Now, now <clears throat> excuse me, for business, because a lot of times we have a business that wants to open up in our city. And of course, they have to get an inspection from my guys downstairs there, and they also have to have an inspection from you. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you look for when you go into a business just starting up. All right, a business just starting up, what I, I really would like to get out there is go ahead and call me up front, mm -hmm. you know, before, you know, we're down to that final thing of trying to get a business license. Okay. That way we can correct some little things because if it was empty, if it was a vacant building and they're trying to open up, there might be a few, few minor adjustments that might have to be made for okay. their type of thing. So we could do a courtesy inspection, you know, that's, that I can go in and just give them, you know, the do's and don'ts, okay. um, which makes it easier when I go do a final inspection and once I sign off on a final inspection, 
they can get their business license. That's right. So it, it, it makes it a whole lot easier on them if they just call ahead of time, and I, I, I don't mind. Okay, and, and the thing that they need to, the viewing audience needs to, to concentrate on, you said a courtesy inspection. Right. So that means there's no cost, you come out, kind of make an assessment of the, of the facility, and, and just kind of give them those pointers. Now, as a fire marshal, what are some of the things that you want to see in a business when they, before they open up? Okay, um, well, everybody has, as a fire marshal, has some pet peeves. Uh -huh. uh, and mine is, the number one thing is I want your exits clear and your doors easily opening, okay. you know. So that's the first thing, I'll check all your exits. Make sure there's no nothing blocking them, nothing in the way that the door handle works properly. Okay. Because if, you know, no matter what, you gotta be able to get out of, in an emergency. That's right. Um, <coughs> if your business has exit signs and it's required, make sure they're working properly. Emergency lights, the same thing. Okay. Um, depending on how big the business is going to be, how many fire extinguishers you're going to have. Okay. Um, you can go to Home Depot and buy one, but you still have to get it serviced and tagged by a professional company oh. um, because we don't know how long the fire extinguisher has been sitting on a shelf somewhere. That's right. So, um, <laughs> exposed wiring, extension cords, trip hazards, ceilings sagging, you know, anything that's life safety type issue. That's oh, okay. what we're gonna look for. All right. Now you made a, a, a point about if it's required, you know, like the exit lights and things of that nature. Now I know that we have some, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the older businesses in town and then some of the newer business. What's the, the line of distinction there as far as requirement concerns, John? Okay. Um, for instance, you got a business that's been there for 20 years as a mercantile. Okay. Okay, we have to inspect the building of which it was built. If it's never changed from mercantile and back in 91 or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, exit sign wasn't required. Well, and another mercantile comes in, it's still mercantile. Right. I have to and still inspect it as 91. 91, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. But if a business come in, so if it was a mercantile and then it was just a business office mm -hmm. was to come in, they got to come up to current code. Okay. And that be dependent on the size of the building, it may require more uh, life safety features. Okay. Right. Um, so they will have to then bring it up. Okay, all right. So basically any major alterations there would probably be that trigger, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay, all right, very good. And it's so important in business, and, and again, if they were just remember to do that courtesy call to you, right. that's gonna kinda help prevent. Now, and I, John, I'm not asking for any specifics here, but can you just kinda give us a range cost range of some of the things like you mentioned about fire extinguishers and you know the doors that open to the exterior give us a range of what something like that might cost a business um there's several companies in town with fire extinguishers and um just off uh, a, a top of my head if mm -hmm. you had to buy a brand new one and it'd be serviced and tagged you're probably looking at around 60 70 dollars okay um for a fire extinguisher now when they come back every year to inspect it it doesn't cost that much, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. I don't know what their cost is, but it's a fraction of. It. Okay. Right. Um, emergency light exit sign. I think at Home Depot you're looking maybe around sixty, seventy dollars again. Okay. Um, the doors now. That depends on <laughs> what style you want. How so you spend as much you want. Right. Okay. You know, money will fix everything. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Now, and, and again, if you know businesses, you know some of our older ones, their uh, occupancy load. I know you guys look at occupancy load too as well. Talk a little bit about that, and, and how does that tie into to fire uh, safety? Well, it, it's, it's very important. Um, the occupancies are based on what type of business. Okay. So, if you have an assembly, there's a ratio. Uh -huh. um, of course, it's going to be a higher ratio per square footage. Uh, mercantile is going to be a little higher than. Uh, a business, okay. but that's what it's adjusted for is a safe, basically an evacuation in case of an emergency. So if uh, there's a building at their occupancy low, and I d I'm the one that does set the occupancy low okay. per the code book. Right. Um, and let's say it's set at 60. And then that's based on if in a case of emergency with the exits that are available, that 60 people can get out of that building safely. Mm -hmm. So if you put 65 in there, that means five are basically at risk. 
on trying to get out safely. Okay, okay. And it's so important. A lot of times I know that people say, oh, well, you know, why do you know why do we have all these restrictions? But again, you called it it's life safety. It's life safety. It's life safety. My job, and that's one thing I take very much pride in, mm -hmm. is to protect the business owner, to protect the customer, mm -hmm. and protect the firefighters if anybody's unfortunate enough to have a call that's right. for their location. Absolutely. You know, and one of the things that we hadn't talked, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. Some buildings are required to have uh, sprinkler systems. Yes, sir. Talk about when that comes into play. Um, Again, there's so many, the, the number one answer to every question that is asked to me, it depends. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Okay. Um, but what it, what it depends on is um, if it's an assembly, uh -huh. the occupancy load, how many people are allowed in there, right. or a square footage of the building, that's when a sprinkler system will come into play. Okay. Um, mercantile is the same thing. It's going to be based on, you know, how big the mercantile is a small okay. mercantile is not going to be required a larger one like a big lots of target or walmart of course is going to be required to be. okay um so that's how the sprinkler system will then get in okay all right very good now your inspections for businesses is it on an annual basis semi-annual basis what's the frequency of your visits to we try once a year minimum okay all right downtown sop we try to get twice a year if possible um, but the minimum is going to be annually okay All right. or if anybody has any concern you know I like on new construction I tell the superintendents I'd rather come out here once a week to get you and you know right. that everybody's on the same page until that final inspection That's right. and then I find a bunch of stuff that needed to be done so on even on a local business if they want a courtesy inspection and I just was there six months ago mm -hmm. well I have no problem going back out okay well very good and again you know and we talked about you know calling ahead John go in and if you don't mind give them your contact information because this is very good and because again it's, it goes to the safety of the business and everybody that's involved give me your contact information all right uh, John Thomas uh, my email is jthomas at lagrangega.org, phone number 706-883-2659. That will roll over to my cell phone because I'm hardly ever in the office, so I'm, you can get me at all times. Okay, very good. One last closing thing, I, I, and I, you know, I know that this goes to the bottom line of to the insurance costs of business and stuff. Yes, sir. The city of LaGrange has a very low ISO rating. Talk about that, John, if you don't mind. Well. <laughs> We're fortunate. Uh -huh. um, the city of LaGrange cares a lot about their status of, of the ISO, uh -huh. which by doing that helps the citizens of the city of LaGrange. That's right. Um, it also helps the police department, fire department, building department, because it gives us the ability to accomplish all these things that we're doing. Uh -huh. um, there's smaller towns or even bigger towns that have a higher ISO rating and sort of handcuffs people in our position mm -hmm. from doing certain things. Absolutely. So, you know, the, we're blessed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and it's because of people like you that care and take pride, as I heard you say, in your job and the other hardworking men and women that make this city the great city that we live in. And gentlemen, thank you for coming on today, on today to share this information. And again, if you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, by all means, give them a call. Uh, Please very do. accessible. John, thank you so much for being on the show today. No problem. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're back for more City Week in just a moment. Why United Way? Because United Way of West Georgia helps support 25 local organizations. Organizations that make life better for all of us. Yes, 25. There's no easier way to help so many of your neighbors through a single donation. When you give to United Way of West Georgia, you help a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining for City Week this week. My guests have been from the Troop County Anchor Foundation, founder Amir Cotton, also along with board member Destiny Thomas, as they talked about an upcoming event that will be taking place on August the 2nd 
at Granger Park between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. So by all means, come on out, enjoy all the fun and activities that will be taking place there. Also ahead on from the LaGrange Fire Department, John Thomas, Fire Marshal, as he talked about the importance of making sure that your businesses are fire safe. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed these interviews, and as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week.